My name's Alex Monroe. I'm a jewellery maker and designer here in London. visited the Foundling many years ago that the museum contacted me and asked if I wouldn't mind um, thinking about designing some pieces of jewellery that we were going to sell in their shop and it was all about um, raising a little bit of money and raising some awareness about the, the work of the museum itself and the work of the, of the charity behind the museum. Um, so I had my first visit and it struck home like a bolt in my heart because my entire life's work and this isn't even with jewellery this is going right back to when I was at school and I got into art but it developed much more as I got into jewellery was uh, was trying to work out what the what the point is what the purpose of, and, and what is I think a big thing is like what is jewellery and when I discovered the tokens I kind of realised that that they were I mean, I'd always known that, that jewellery had been made since the year dot and, and worn and it was a necessary thing. But they kind of seem to be the embody, the quintessential everything that jewellery is. It's almost an impossible task to choose your favourite token. They've all got different things. So some of them I love because they're some are really pretty. I mean, they're beautiful bits of, of thing that you'd want to wear. Other ones are really quirky and interesting. Now there's one token there, the Sir Isaac Newton token, where we have both halves. And, and I think this is, maybe it's me just being a, a, a terrible um, optimist, but I just love the idea that actually within all that hope, there was some kind of requited success stories and that, and that whoever did this, whoever cut this coin in half, went off and something good happened to them. They wore the other half of the coin against their skin for years and years and years or however long it took. And then they came back and they reclaimed. I mean, I, I don't think that that can be proved, but, but I can't think of another way as to how come they have both halves of the token there. So, so I've chosen this token because it, for me, it symbolizes the triumph of hope um, and the triumph of hope in jewelry. Talking from a, from, from a jeweler's point of view, it's been cut in half in a, in a funny way. They didn't have the same tools that I have. It's had holes punched down the middle of it. I don't think they're drilled, I think they're punched. And then it's been scratched. I think it's been scratched along the line of holes that were punched. And then it's been bent to and fro until it's broken. And they've also used this same scratching or engraving technique to engrave the letter E on each half. So we have a coin split in two um, and only the real other half would match the half that's, that's been left with the baby. So you, it would be indisputable proof that you, the baby was yours if you, if you possessed that half a coin. But I think it's, it's not so much the, the, uh, the beauty of the token that I love, it's the fact that it symbolizes hope. So when I, when I see my, particularly when I look back through my work, I, I see what I see when I looked at this token. I see the marks of the maker, of the hand, of the, how it was done. And I see the process of making. So looking at my work, I don't, I, I don't kind of see these other things. I'm just seeing that the, the handmade elements of it, like the person that that founded this coin. My job is to make something that somebody else will want to put some significance, connection or importance on. Some of the things that's, that jewellery holds are just massively important. So uh, I think it's nice to have a, a symbol behind the charity's work in the museum that's essentially a positive, hopeful symbol, which is 
triumph of hope, which I just think sort of sums up uh, everything and kind of leaves us on a, on, a, on a sort of upbeat positive note. Hopefully, we don't know, but it's, there's, that, that's, that, let's just keep our fingers crossed that that is the, what happened, yeah.